Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Little Nightmares 2. We're back out on the streets of the Pale City. And I'm thinking that we probably want to be looking for shelter. Oh yeah, another one. Okay. So a major theme of the first game is consumption and consumerism. So I think the commentary on the televisions here fits right along with that. Uh, but some of it does feel a little trite in 2021 if the angle that they're going with is the usual like slave to technology critique. It's just uh, very Banksy because I think by now, the pitfalls of an increasingly digitized society are well-known and well-trodden ground. Too much screen time can have deleterious effect on mental health. Uh, we're constantly forfeiting our privacy rights and handing, uh, handing over massive amounts of data to be harvested by some of the least scrupulous people and companies on the planet. And our electronics are put together by sweatshop labor, which perpetuates grisly wars and imperialistic exploitation by sourcing the parts for those electronics from conflict zones. Most of this stuff I think we all have at least a basic awareness of by now. That information is just so pervasive. Um, but perhaps it's so pervasive that we get numb to it too. We become, we become inoculated by how shocking and horrifying those facts actually are. Jesus Christ! Oh, shit. God, that snapped me right out of the middle of that thought. Ah, uh, what was I saying? <laughs> um... Oh, okay, I got it. And these are valid issues for, for art to tackle. Uh, but we're just long, long beyond the point where something is basic or insubstantial and devoid of nuances. Um, as, like, everyone's on their phone or watching TV all the time and it makes them into zombies. Doesn't that suck? That being said, I, I think Little Nightmares has definitely earned a little more benefit of the doubt than that. So... That's just what this is kind of reminding me of a little bit. It'd be interesting if this turned out to be more of a, like, a bread and circuses thing. Oh, shit! He did a little half jump. I'm quite possibly jumping the gun, but... We are getting deeper in now. And uh, another way of reading it is that this is about escapism. The real world of Little Nightmares is horrific. It's crushingly bleak. So Mono escapes into the TV. It's hard to ignore that this game came out nearly a year into the isolation of a pandemic, too, so... It's a time when people are in a lot of emotional pain, and when a lot of us are pretty lonely. I mean, hell, the main character's name is Mono. One. Alone. And... Oh, they don't mind the light. Still. I can't make out what's being said at all. That warm glow of the TV is... Oh, they're all transfixed. 
Yeah, I think that kind of tells us a little bit about the direction that we're going. A lot of us right now are using games and TV and other distractions to escape and make this really hard time a little bit easier. There's Mono in the TV. Uh, Six has her music box playing the theme from the first game, uh, the song that she hums a lot. I love how much that also evokes that scene from the hospital. Just the imagery of it. The imagery is the most powerful part of the game. Six is just ready to go. I don't blame her. Huh. So that's not gonna work. Back down, maybe? Wait, do we have to jump out early? Ah, yeah, that looks to be the case. Wow, the physics of that. I guess six isn't coming. Okay. Hope I didn't break the game. I'm sure she'll catch up with us. Oh my god, I would love to pan the camera out. Okay. Oh. She's just gonna wait for us on the other side of the elevator. Yeah, we're not doing it that way. Oh. That was simple. Is there anything interesting around? Okay. Can't actually tell what's posted up there. sure what that did. Maybe that changed where the elevator leads. That took me way too long to figure out. So you have to send the elevator back down and then jump out of it on that floor, then call it back up. Not entirely sure what that is. is this and then over here the bird stuffed into the one hmm this game gives you a lot to process
What is that in the distance? Oh, wait, I think it's coming more into focus. I know what that is. I've seen it referred to as the signal tower. Okay. Thought she fell behind. Okay, you let me up here, and then... Oh, she's gonna use the hanger. This is a lot of body weight to be doing this with. Oh god, I have to make the jump. Okay, that wasn't that bad. I, I can't get over how amazing this game looks. And half of it's style, but half of it is just it, it technically beautiful as well. There's just a lot of time and love put into this. We gotta shimmy up the pipe. Yeah. And then on through here. Somehow, this has been the most grounded part of the whole game, and it's the bleakest. Like, it's got the thickest, most oppressive atmosphere. Holy shit. Am I on a timer here? Oh no. Holy shit! Oh my god. Oh no! <gasps> okay. I'm okay. I wasn't sure if that was a death. <gasps> oh no! Oh no! And my flash. Okay, she's okay. But my flashlight's dead. These were just the sad old bones of a dilapidated, poorly maintained apartment complex. Oh, damn. And of course, TV's strewn everywhere. That looks like the dude who was hanging in the first game. And the eyes again. So the children are terrified of him. Another one of these. Yeah.
And then it should be one more. Is there anything new about this hall this time? The way it bends. This looks more warped than before. It sorted itself out. We're actually going to get to see behind the door this time. Okay, who the hell is that? Holy shit! Oh my god! Who? I really wasn't expecting that guy to be important. Assuming it is the person from the first game. Oh no, this was... Under the bed. Oh, nope. Oh, hello, Slenderman. Okay, I think that actually dovetails the discussion about the TVs from earlier pretty nicely so that's gonna do it for tonight thank you all for watching take it easy have a good one